Hey guys, Tomb Raider Chronicles was released in 2000 and sold the least number of copies out of all of the classic Tomb Raider games. It only had 13 levels, which made it feel more like a mini game compared to Tomb Raider 4 that had 35 levels. It received lots of criticism for its length, but honestly, any game to follow Tomb Raider 4 would feel shorter. Regardless of its length, it was still my second favorite Tomb Raider game, and I loved it so much I wrote a story called The Strenuous Escapade, and I'll include a link below the video. As always, grab something yummy to eat, get comfortable, and sit back and enjoy my review. And it goes without saying, even though the game is 14 years old, if you haven't already played it, consider this your spoiler warning. The game begins at Lara's mansion as we sit back to watch the opening movie. Winston and friends have gathered for memorial to remember Lara as she's presumed dead after Egypt. The last revelation left us wondering if she had escaped the tomb, but instead of finding out, we quickly learn Chronicles will be focused on her past adventures told by friends in remembrance of her. The first story, The Philosopher's Stone, kicks off with a gorgeous movie of Lara at the opera. She's waiting with a briefcase of cash to buy the Mercury Stone when Pierre, who we all know from Tomb Raider 1, points a gun to her head and gets the briefcase. She very gingerly holds her hand up for a kiss, whacks him, and kicks Larson. The stone goes flying and Lara does some super impressive acrobatics off the balcony to get the stone and escapes. This is a perfect way to start the game and the look on Lara's face is a promise of all the action still ahead. The first level, The Streets of Rome, is divided into two sections, a training area in the backstage of the Opera House and the rest of the level. It's a great refresher to practice Lara's moves and learn one of the new ones, tightrope walking. This move is a great addition to Lara's moves and will come across many tightrope walking opportunities throughout the game. If you don't correct Lara as she starts to sway too far to one side, she'll fall off. After completing the training area, the level begins and it's fun to explore. There are Dobermen all over the place, bats, and rats that you can't kill. It's a lot of fun exploring the buildings, shooting windows, and finding keys. The graphics look great, but there hasn't been any huge improvements since Tomb Raider 4. Overall, this is a straightforward level with tons of hidden pickups and places to explore. We meet up with Larson at one point who tries to kill Lara, but escapes before she can return the favor. Later on in the level, we see a cutscene where Larson and Pierre are spying on Lara and decide to wait to ambush her once she retrieves all pieces needed for the last part of the level. There's a fun mini puzzle with bird statues and a battering ram and we also find a revolver and laser sight which is needed to complete the level. Once Lara gets all the pieces she needs, Larson and Pierre make their move. She tries to warn them about the gate they want to open, but naturally they ignore her and Larson gets sapped. Overall, this level is a little linear, but still a fun way to start the game. The next level, Trajan's Markets, is fairly small but has a ton going on, and is my favorite level in this section. There's a bunch of rooms to explore with shootable crates, tightrope walking, pullable ropes, and swarms of rats. There's a mini mechanical puzzle near the beginning that's fun, and there's a bunch of hidden pickups to reward your extra exploring. My favorite part of the level is a huge mechanical head that shoots deadly rays and will kill Lara instantly. It's pretty tough and a lot of fun. You need to run around the room avoiding the rays and at the same time try to shoot his eyes out to destroy him. You'll get good practice using the laser sight which will come in handy later on. As we travel deeper into the level we find ourselves underground in murky water where you need to shut off some fans in order to continue. We also find the shotgun which is useful for the next baddie, a huge soldier that comes to life carrying a sword that shoots energy bolts. This boss is tough because you're in a tiny room, so there's not a lot of room to run around. This boss is really fun and it's a good challenge to see if you can completely avoid being sliced or zapped. Once we retrieve the piece needed for the gate, we return outside and Larson is of course waiting for Lara. 
There's a bit of a gun battle between them before a cutscene takes over. The three gargoyle heads on the gate suddenly come to life, and she tries to warn him. Not wanting to fall for a silly trick, he ignores her warnings and ends up getting bitten by one of the gargoyles. Apparently, he doesn't catch on quickly. Now we need to kill the three gargoyles to finish the level. This part is challenging and a lot of fun. All gargoyles shoot fireballs at Lara, and if she gets hit, she'll catch on fire instantly and die unless you extinguish her in the pool. I've always been a stickler for saving ammo and like to use the pistols here. Only problem is it takes a good five minutes or so to kill them this way, but worth it if you want to consume ammo. Lara will also take slight damage if any of the fireballs graze her, so always be ready to use a med pack just in case. The final level in this section, Colosseum, is a little confusing. The exact dates of this adventure were never shared, so it's unclear if this adventure happened before or after Tomb Raider 1. It's a little strange to be back here after Tomb Raider 1's Colosseum level, but still different enough to be fun. This level is packed with traps, so you've got to be on guard. There are breakable floors with lava below, lions, gladiators, and spikes. You'll be happy if you saved ammo so you can kill the lions and gladiators quickly. Overall, the beginning of this level has a creepy feel to it as you explore room by room. The hardest part of this level is the near impossible timed run in the center of the level. Tomb Raider games wouldn't be Tomb Raider games if there wasn't at least one extremely hard timed run, and this one will definitely make you feel like a million bucks when you finally get it. After beating the timed run, we get to relax a moment while another cutscene takes over. Lara slips down a slope and almost falls off the ledge into a deep pit. She catches the ledge just in time and is left hanging. Somehow Pierre shows up and decides to help her, only if she promises not to lay a finger on him. Just when she's back on her two feet, she turns the tables, scaring him off the ledge, and suddenly he is the one hanging over the pit. When he begs for her help, she kindly reminds him of their deal. He falls to his death, and at this point, we now know the correct timeline between Tomb Raider 1's Coliseum and this one. Just before the end of the level, Lara comes across another gigantic statue, this time holding a massive hammer. He's very easy to kill, and there's lots of room to run around and avoid him. Finally, Lara retrieves the Philosopher's Stone, and this story ends. Out of the four sections in this game, this is my fourth favorite. The next section begins with another movie, where Zhang Yi introduces the next story. He points to a picture of a German submarine, and Winston says Lara would never tell him the story for his own protection. According to the story, deep inside the U-boat was an artifact called the Spear of Destiny. It was said to be the most powerful artifact, capable of making an entire army invincible. The movie cuts to a naval base with Lara and Jean Yves, who, if you haven't remembered by now, was in Tomb Raider 4. They're up on a hill scoping out the base, and he tells her the submarine she'll be boarding is nuclear. He gives her a tracking device and she heads down to the base. The level begins in some sort of a warehouse with a ton of storage crates. You'll also notice Lara's in a new outfit, which is one of my favorites in the game. Inside the warehouse is a mechanical claw being operated by a worker. As soon as he spots Lara, he tries to smash her with it, and it's a lot of fun exploring the room, climbing crates, and collecting goodies while trying to avoid being smashed to bits. There are several searchable lockers scattered throughout the building, which are new and often house valuable pickups. Soldiers are scattered throughout the level and German shepherds. We get the Uzis in this level, which make taking these guys down really easy. The music makes you feel a little on edge throughout the level, and because of it, you're always anticipating an attack. This is perfect and makes you feel more connected with Lara. As always, there's keys to be found and key cards, so you can move deeper into the level. There's a locker room with a ton of goodies and a secret that's fun to get to. 
Once you gain access outside the building, the scenery is absolutely beautiful. It's snowing heavily and all the colors pop against the white nicely. We also get the Desert Eagle in this level, and if you combine it with the laser sight, it's a lot of fun taking out the snipers with headshots who are hiding up in the windows. The level ends when Lara sneaks on board the U-boat. The submarine, the next level, is a personal favorite. It starts out with a brief cutscene, Lara's been made. The captain of the sub and his men find her on board and quickly lock her up and take her weapons. Of course, it wouldn't be a Tomb Raider game if we didn't lose all our guns at some point. A little panic sets in while you try to figure out how to break out of the room, and when you finally do, freedom feels pretty sweet. The level is made up of a ton of ventilation shafts with huge fans, swinging electrical wires, and deadly drops. It's a lot of fun to bypass the traps and work your way deeper into the sub. You definitely feel vulnerable without any weapons, which makes you turn on your stealth mode fast. One of the highlights is knocking a cookout cold in the kitchen to steal his key. Finally, we retrieve the pistols and like all previous games, feels great to have them back. Now that Lara's armed, and probably a little pissed off, it's time to go on a killing spree and take out as many baddies on the ship as possible. The sub has several rooms, hallways, ladders, and places to explore. You'll need to collect keys and key cards to progress through tighter security on the ship, and the door hatches with wheels always lead to more exploring. There are cabinets to explore as well, which almost always contain some valuable pickups. This level has some creepy music that keeps you alert and guns ready at all times. There are gunmen lurking everywhere, and you never want to be caught off guard. We also find the shotgun in the sub, batteries, an aqua lung, and suit console needed for the next section. Once all these items have been collected and put together, we can enjoy a cutscene of Lara climbing into the extreme depth suit and heading down to the water. Overall, this level is really fun to explore, has a creepy vibe, and I absolutely love exploring all the rooms. The next level, Deep Sea Dive, is a super tiny level that I think should have been part of the submarine level. We begin in the water, under the U-boat, in the extreme depth suit, and have the freedom to swim around. It is a lot of fun swimming with the suit, and best of all, you don't have to worry about Lara's air supply. Once you get past the boat a little ways, there's a mini sub that begins to shoot torpedoes at Lara. It's very easy to avoid them by swimming side to side as you explore the water more for an entrance. There's a series of underground tunnels that you swim through until you come across the Spear of Destiny. Right when Lara picks it up, the entire place starts collapsing and her air supply gets punctured. Up to this point, it was all relaxing, but now there's a mad rush to get back to the sub before she runs out of air. The extreme depth suit suddenly seems really clunky as you try to get out of the tight tunnels. Anytime you oversteer and bash it into the sides, it costs extra time and you might not make it back to the ship. Once you do make it back safely, a cutscene takes over back inside the ship. Lara gets out of the suit, and Sergei is there waiting with his men. He, of course, demands the spear, and Lara gives it up with a warning. Suddenly, there's a huge electrical current that zaps him, and there's a huge blast. Seems like a common theme throughout this game. The last level in this section, Sinking Submarine, is also one of my favorites. Red lights are flashing everywhere, water is seeping into the sub, Rooms and doorways have collapsed, lights are flickering, small fires are scattered around, and sirens are blasting like crazy. In other words, Lara needs to haul ass and get the heck out of there. This entire level is completely chaotic and stressful, which is what makes it so good. At one point, there's electrical wires that fall from the ceiling suddenly and land in the water, making the entire room a death zone. It's really tense as you try to maneuver around the room without accidentally hitting the floor. I love this part. 
The only downfall of this level is it's somewhat linear compared to the submarine level when we came through the ship for the first time. Since most of the passages and rooms have collapsed, it does feel more straightforward, but in my opinion, the traps and chaos make up for it. Eventually, Lara comes across the Admiral who was injured, sitting in a partially flooded room. He blames Sergei for infecting his ship with greed. Lara offers to help him, but he refuses. He gives her a key so she can get oxygen for the escape pod. We come across another flooded room with live wires, and unknown to us the first time, we actually have the choice to go in and retrieve the oxygen tank now, or come back later after the power has been turned off. Every time I've played this level, I've always gone in right away because I love the challenge. In one of the hallways, there are a few fires blocking the path, and it's another nice challenge. Eventually, we find a power switch to turn off the electrical wires, and also the Desert Eagle. It's a bit of a tease though, since there's only two more bodies left to kill. Once we've secured the oxygen and nitrogen canisters, Lara tries to help the Admiral one last time, but like a good captain, he wants to go down with the ship. Lara escapes via the escape pod, and we see Jean Yib waiting for her at the surface. Out of the four sections in this game, this is my second favorite. The third section of the game begins with a movie of young Lara visiting Winston's home in an Irish village. This is the first time we've ever seen his house, and Father Patrick is there with them. Lara eavesdrops on a conversation between the two from another room, and hears Father Patrick talk about strange apparitions on an island. He has a boat chartered to visit the island, and Lara seizes the opportunity to escape and quietly hops on board. The first level, Gallows Tree, gives you an instant chill and creepy feeling when the level begins. There's a storm nearby, it's fairly dark, and you definitely feel very isolated. To top it off, Lara doesn't have a single weapon on hand, leaving you feeling completely defenseless. The scenery beyond the forest is absolutely beautiful and one of my favorite spots in this level. Birds call out constantly and creepy music plays while you explore the dark area and it sets the mood perfectly. Right from the start, this area is non-linear and it takes a little while to figure out where you need to go. There's monkey swinging, a ton of bats, and we arrive at a dark chute with no other choice than to venture on. The level suddenly gets a little creepier when Lara arrives at the bottom and is startled by a rotting corpse hanging by a noose from a tree. He asks her to find his heart for him and promises to reward her if she does. Suddenly, a changeling comes out of nowhere that is creepy as hell. He's a little white demon that makes creepy noises and tries to chase Lara. Since we don't have any weapons, you need to keep running to avoid his teeth. As you explore the level, there's a ton of pickups to be found. Lara makes a slingshot out of the pieces, which is used to continue through the level. There are dark, twisting underwater tunnels, and an area with a bunch of open crypts and incredibly creepy music. There are rats that will chase you through the water and onto land, spike pits, and deep pits. Eventually, we find a torch that more or less gives you a false sense of security. Once Lara retrieves the petrified heart, she runs across Father Patrick, who is busy performing an exorcism into a deep pit. He asks her to meet him at the chapel and tells her not to speak to any strange things. One of the best parts of this level is at the very end when Lara uses the petrified heart. It unleashes a ton of changelings, which gets you to panic instantly. Luckily for us, one of the pickups helps to repel them just in time. Overall, this level is fantastic. It's creepy, dangerous, and makes you feel very vulnerable without any weapons. The second level, Labyrinth, begins in a creepy abandoned church. There's pew benches scattered in the room, three buttons on a wall. It's dark, and only a bit of light from the windows is coming through. Once you start moving, we realize Lara isn't alone. Tons of phantom skeletons appear out of nowhere, hacking at Lara with their swords. It only takes one hit to inflict a ton of damage, so have a med pack ready or do your best to avoid them. There's another creepy skeleton in the room that seems to be showing Lara where to go, 
and once we collect and use some bone dust, all of the skeletons are destroyed. Next up is a long drop through a hole in the floor into some nasty green water. Once we get out of the water, the creepy hooded skeleton is back, and we get a quick cutscene of him showing Lara the way out. Hope you have a really good memory because it goes by quickly, and as soon as you regain control of her, the maze begins. For whatever reason, this puzzle is the hardest for me to wrap my head around. There's a room with rotating bridges and gas jets that will ignite Lara if you fall off. In order to solve the puzzle, you need to rotate the bridges correctly to find the correct path. The cutscenes are a little confusing each time you rotate the bridge. I think this is my least favorite puzzle in all the Tomb Raider games. Once you rotate the bridges correctly and find your way out, we come across dancing lights at the beginning of a maze. As you run forward, they show Lara which way to go, which is extremely helpful. A monster comes out from one of the passages and chases her. Knowing you don't have any weapons, you run like hell trying to keep up with the lights and avoid falling into the holes. It could be a lot worse. It could be Caves of Kalia all over again, but this time with a monster and no lights showing you the way. After exiting the mini maze, Lara meets up with Father Patrick and notices his hair has gone white. He says he was detained by an unpleasant fellow from down below and gave him quite a fright. Overall, this is my least favorite level in this section. While it's creepy, it doesn't have a whole lot going on and the puzzle is confusing since the cutscenes don't match what's actually going on during the bridge puzzle. Old Mill, the last level in this section, is my favorite and a lot of fun. It begins with a cutscene of Father Patrick telling Lara to stay put so he can go find a safe place for her. Naturally, Lara never listens and once the cutscene ends, we're free to explore. There's two ways to start the level, go straight or left. Going straight triggers a cutscene with a demon horseman who tries to cut Lara. He dismounts, grabs her, and throws her back to the other end of the path every time you try to go this way. Luckily, it doesn't impact her health. Just when we've forgotten about the changelings from the first level, we run into a group of them overlooking a deep pit. As soon as they spot Lara, the little beasts pick up rocks and whip them at her. They can diminish her health fairly quickly, so it's best to avoid them as much as possible. Luckily for us, a nearby torch can be used to scare them, leaving the area free to explore from the psycho rock-throwing demons. Hanging over the pit is a rope, and it's fun to swing around figuring out where you need to go. We get a few pickups in this area, and return to the beginning of the level with the most important one, chalk. A cutscene takes over as Lara kneels down to draw symbols on the ground with the chalk. The demon horseman appears again and charges right for her. It looks like the symbols prevent him from going any further, but he still raises his sword to strike Lara. Just as he's about to hit her, Father Patrick pushes her out of the way. The demon knocks him unconscious and rides off with him, leaving Lara alone. Another cutscene begins a moment later at a barn. The demon bursts out of it with Father Patrick on his horse. He says he's been trapped there for 700 years, and unless Lara helps him get out, he'll kill the priest. Lara somehow realizes that the running water from the mill is what's keeping the demon there, and has to get it shut off. The area around the barn is fun to explore, and we soon find a passageway leading to a windmill and pond. The pond is creepy, and there's two sections to explore. All of a sudden, a quick cutscene starts with a super creepy and ugly sea hag who attacks Lara. This leaves you darting for the surface as fast as possible, only to realize the hag stays below. The hag is guarding a silver coin, and you've got to time it just right to sneak back in and steal it while she's not looking. The next part is so much fun, using the coin to trap her and sitting back to enjoy watching a group of changelings crank the cage to the surface and attack her. Finally, these demons are good for something. Once we get access to the mill, there's a fun timed run sequence in a gear room. You need to pull a wheel several times to open a door, run past the wheel, jump and swing around a pole, then duck under the door before it closes. 
It's pretty easy and a lot of fun. Best part is, if you slide right down after getting through the door, you'll miss the switch that actually slows the water, so you'll have to do the timed run again if you miss it. After successfully slowing down the water, we return to the barn where it's time for a little more exploring. It's a lot of fun jumping across the roof and the scenery looks amazing. Once inside the mill, there's a gear that completely stops the water. We sit back for another cutscene where the demon bursts back out with Father Patrick. He knocks him in the head and threatens to snuff Larry's life out like a candle. The priest regains consciousness just in time and tells Lara to read the names from the book she found earlier. She successfully gains power over the demon and commands him to go back to where he belongs. Father Patrick and Lara leave the island together and this story is complete. Out of the four sections in this game, this is my third favorite. The final section in the game is my absolute favorite. It begins with Winston introducing the story as he unveils a case containing an artifact called the Iris. The video switches to Zip, Lara's new accomplice, in a van outside of a huge building. Lara's in a sexy black catsuit equipped with a headset and black glasses. She uses a hang glider to get across to the building and swings down a rope shooting a vent cover to gain access. This entire opening is action-packed and gets you pumped up for the final levels. The first level, 13th floor, begins in a series of duct systems that are full of laser traps. We also have a new type of weapon, the HK. It has three modes, sniper, burst, and rapid, which will all come in handy. We're without the pistols for this entire section, so you really need to watch your ammo supply. It's fun exploring the ducks, rooms, and shelves for goodies. It's really in these last levels where we get to use one of Lara's new moves the most, being able to forward roll out of crawl spaces, which not only looks cool, but is a lot faster than having to turn around and drop out. Some of the laser traps are really hard to get past, and you need to watch them carefully before figuring out a plan to avoid them. Some passageways only have one laser, but others have two which make things really tricky. I really love these traps. At one point, without the player knowing on their first time through, we come to a little fork in the level where we come across a padlocked gate. You can either use the hammer we found earlier to break it open, or shoot it. Depending on what you decide, you'll either get a pickup and chance to kill a body, or skip by this completely. I absolutely love being stealthy in this level, sneaking up on guards and killing them from behind before they detect Lara. The floors in the building are also equipped with gun turrets, so if a guard spots you first, Lara's toast. We come across a sleeping guard on one of the floors, and it's up to us whether he lives or dies. Unknown to the player, if you don't kill him, you'll meet two more guards later on. At that point, you'll use up more ammo in the limited HK than if you had killed Sleeping Beauty. That's what's great of not knowing what impact your choice will have. Besides the guards, there are several workers wearing orange suits who will yell, Don't shoot! to Lara. If you stress them out too much, they'll activate turrets, but it's up to you what happens. The level design is pretty neat for this section, and I think it's the only level where you get to see the finale multiple times before you actually get to access it. As far as pickups go, there's med packs, key cards, access discs, and chloroform to find during the level. One of the access cards opens up a shaft that's full of explosions and will kill Lara if one hits her. I haven't got a clue what the purpose of this is, but it would suck huge for the employee who originally held the card. Another thing I love throughout this level is the commentary with Zip. He's beyond hilarious, witty, sarcastic, and the banter between the two is great. Best of all, it only happens now and then, so you always want to hear what he has to say. Towards the end of the level, we come into a large room with a guy in an armored suit. You need to be very quiet so he doesn't hear Lara, otherwise she'll get zapped to death with his gun. In a tiny room at the bottom, there's huge glass cages full of bugs, and depending which locker you decide to go through, will trigger the glass breaking and Lara being chased by thousands of them. We collect a cloth and more chloroform, 
and by now we definitely know what to do. One of the best additions to the game is being able to knock out guards with the chloroform. You need to be super stealthy while you creep up behind them, and it's really rewarding watching Lara take him down. Of course, if you're not in the mood for stealth, you can shoot him in the face multiple times. You need to be incredibly fast because he can kill Lara very quickly. I personally prefer using the chloroform because I feel all badass doing it, but the choice is yours. Sometimes we don't get the choice to kill guards, however, when there's turret guns monitoring rooms. At one point, there's a room with a guard patrolling the perimeter, while workers in orange suits are busy in the center. If Lara has a weapon drawn, the turret will take her down immediately, so we have no choice but to be stealthy and creep around to get past this guard. This part is super tense, and at any second you can be spotted. Once you get past the guard, we come across another worker. Unfortunately for him, the next door needs two cards to be used at the same time, and Lara doesn't give him a choice. We finally gain access to the iris room that we've been seeing from the beginning, but the iris is protected by a force field. There's a switch in the room above that turns it off, starting a timed run for the prize. This one's pretty challenging, as the camera is fixed for a portion of it, but once you time everything just right, the iris is yours and the level finishes. Typically a level ends when Lara finally gets the artifact, but this time it just kicks things off. The second level, Escape with the Iris, starts with Lara getting heck from Zip. He tells her she's been a bad girl and needs to disarm herself. If you don't listen to his instructions, you'll quickly learn he's not fibbing. Once you reluctantly give up the HK, we head through a scanner which is beyond awesome. Not only is it fun to run and flip around, but there's two suitcases to check out. If not already obvious by the weird wiring, one of them has a bomb and you'll definitely remember this later on in the level. Finally we get to put our headset to use. You can use it to see invisible lasers that line some of the hallways. If you don't see them, Lara dies instantly, so it's useful and fun to check things out before running in. If you enjoyed using chloroform in the last level, you're going to love this one. There's a ton of offices to explore, and you'll find more claws and chloroform among other goodies if you search each cabinet. We come across a door leading to the bathrooms, but it's locked with a keypad. The combo is hiding in one of the offices, and once we find this, we're free to explore. Ultimately, we need to break out of one of the bathrooms to re-enter the ducts and work our way to an elevator shaft. The shaft is really fun and it's full of poles, wires, elevator cars, and if you miss a step or let go by accident, Lara will fall a long way to her death. I love being able to swing around poles and with Lara's sleek outfit and flashing lights in the shaft, this whole section is badass. Once we gain access to one of the elevator cars, all hell breaks loose. It stops at a floor full of bodies shooting the crap out of Lara, and then suddenly starts plunging to the ground. The first time I played this, I ran around like a crazy person, and of course, accidentally killed Lara. How many of you died before realizing you just had to push a button? I love how the elevator brings us all the way back to the bottom, and we have to work our way back up. Once back inside the elevator shaft, there's more pole swinging, tightrope walking, and fire burner traps. I love this section and think this is one of the most tense levels in the game. There's snipers and guards all trying to take Lara out, and it's fun trying to navigate a room while the camera switches to the sniper's view. This level becomes even more stressful as we get into a room and Lara tells Zip there's men with welding torches breaking into the room. To make things worse, you have to walk because there's fast movement trackers which will kill Lara in seconds if you make any sudden movements. It's incredibly tense as you try to make your way around pushing buttons to open a door and to get out before the baddies get you. Remember the suitcases from the beginning of the level? We come across a room full of them and we have to go through them to find a code disc needed to get out of this section. The first time I played this level, I didn't know there was a secret x-ray room to help you out and went suitcase by suitcase getting blown up until I found the disc. 
I'm sure I killed Lara a hundred times in this level my first time through. Once we get the disc, we use it with the iris to teleport to another room. The next part is another favorite. We head through the ducts and see a guard busy patrolling the hallway. There's a keypad on the door and we need to memorize the code. Once he heads off, you need to enter it as fast as possible, then sneak up behind him and take him out with more chloroform. This entire sequence almost makes you breathe differently as you are so careful not to let him spot you. Best of all, once we get inside, you'll realize we're in the x-ray room from the beginning of the level. Once the x-ray machine is disabled, we finally get the HK back and blast our way out of the building. I absolutely love this level. It's fun, challenging, the atmosphere is amazing, and makes you feel like you're actually infiltrating the building. I also like the red hues in the ducts and looks awesome against Lara's black outfit. Once we blast our way out, a cutscene starts with Von Croy somewhere in the building. He's talking to a guard, and the guard informs him they've lost visual contact of Lara. They watch surveillance footage and Von Croy says he knows exactly who she is. The guard places the building under full alert. The final level, Red Alert, is so much fun. If you thought Escape with the Iris was stressful, multiply that by 10 for this one. Unfortunately though, there are a ton of serious game-stopping bugs in this level, so I always use multiple safe slots just in case. The level begins outside on a staircase high above the ground. A helicopter is patrolling the perimeter of the building and soldiers are on alert. Several sections of the staircase collapse so it's challenging and fun to avoid falling while working your way up. Best of all if you set the HK to sniper mode, you can take out guards before they have a clue you're there. After finding a wall we can kick in, we're back inside. There are a ton of guards all over the place, so it's probably best to set the HK to rapid mode, especially if they sneak up on you all of a sudden. In the last level, we used the headset a little bit to detect lasers, but this time it's pretty much imperative for the next section. A small hallway houses several moving lasers, and it's pretty challenging to get by them. If you shoot the valve at the end of the hallway, the lasers will be easier to see, which is pretty cool. The next part is probably either the most loved or most hated section in this level. You know what I'm talking about, the two shooting ranges which are mandatory for continuing. The first shooting range is pretty easy and usually takes me a few tries. The key is memorizing the order of the targets so you can adjust quickly. Once you get past the first one, the second is really hard. Best of all, if you don't pass, Poison gas leaks into the room and slowly kills Lara. Overall, this section is very difficult, but definitely not impossible. Beyond the shooting ranges is a room full of weapons, and we get the grappling gun here. We don't have to wait long to use it, the next room gives us a chance. It's a lot of fun and easy to use. There's more elevators to take, and guards break through the ceiling with guns as Lara is hunted. We come across a room that houses a cyborg. At first you think you can shoot him, but soon realize that's not the way. You need to shoot a valve to partially flood the room, then shoot him until he starts to crackle with electricity and finally die. He's a lot of fun to kill, especially trying to avoid being shot while you find a safe place to take cover. I love the jumps in this room, sliding backwards and flipping to make your way higher, where we get to use the grappling gun again. I really like this part, but like I mentioned before, there's a potentially serious bug that sometimes gets triggered. After we kill the cyborg, we enter into a long hallway with glass windows all along the right side. The helicopter we saw at the beginning is back and this time shooting like crazy. Not only do you have to avoid the gunfire, you need to perform several jumps to avoid falling into pits along the way. This part is adrenaline packed and it's great fun trying to take as little damage as possible. Once you get to safety and use a switch, it's time to go back down the hallway and face the helicopter again. Just as you round the corner, another cyborg appears and chases you. Now you've got to avoid the fire from the helicopter, 
jump over the pits, and outrun the cyborg all at the same time. This part is really fun and I love the level design. Since we can't shoot the cyborg, the trick is to trap him in one of the rooms before he catches up. You've got to be really good at sprinting and know exactly where to go to have enough time. Once he is trapped, we can explore down another hallway full of small connecting rooms. The catch? They're all filling with poisonous gas, so you've got to find the one room containing a switch before Lara dies. Once you flip the switch, the gas is redirected to the room with the cyborg and he dies. There's also a few guards lurking around and overall this part is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, almost every time I've played this level, I've triggered another bug here, so it's really important to always use multiple save slots to try and avoid it. Once we collect the final piece needed to get out of the building, we can sit back and enjoy the final cutscene. Zip congratulates Lara as she escapes from the building, and she grabs her hang glider. A ton of baddies run out, all shooting at her, and she manages to escape just in time. Back at Lara's mansion, Winston and friends give a toast to absent friends, and then we cut to Egypt where a boy calls out to Von Croy. We see him hold up Lara's backpack, and the game ends when he says, we found her. Out of the four sections in this game, this is my favorite. Thanks so much for watching my review. Tomb Raider Chronicles was such an amazing game and I loved the short stories. Check out links below the video to download my story and over 700 screenshots from the game. As always, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. And let me know below which section and level was your favorite from the game. I'll see you guys later.